It is my pleasant task this morning to read the Prime Minister of Fiji's statement. Honorable Siawosi Soloveni, Prime Minister of the Kingdom of Tonga. Excellencies, members of the Diplomatic Corps, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. It is wonderful to be able to join you here this morning. As the Horn Prime Minister of Fiji conveyed to the UN Oceans Conference in Lisbon last month and this very week at the Pacific Island Leaders Forum, the nations we represent in this region are the world's blue beacons. It has been evident for a while now that we, the planet's large ocean states, are very much the ones setting the standards by which the rest of the world will follow. As you know all too well, we find ourselves on the cusp of catastrophic and cascading impacts of climate change on our oceans. That is why, as the steward of 1.3 million square kilometers of blue Pacific Ocean, Fiji recently announced a suite of new ambitious commitments at the Ocean Conference. We are working to bolster our long-term economic resilience by investing in our blue economy, thereby investing in jobs and in the health of the planet. Both can happen, both will happen in Fiji. From banning deep seabed mining, planning for 100% of Fijian waters to be sustainably managed by 2030, and by committing to slash our shipping sector's carbon emissions, 40% by 2030, to achieve zero carbon by 2050. Many of you here will know that the transport sector, land, air, and marine, is the largest user of fossil fuels in our region, accounting for at least 70% of all Pacific Island countries' use. For small island developing states, sea transport is a significant, and in some cases, the majority user of fossil fuels. In addition to its extremely harmful impact on the environment, including the acceleration of climate change, the current maritime sector in the Pacific region experiences a high degree of inefficiencies, fueled by well, high fuel costs, irregular shipping services, scarcity of jetty facilities, and high costs of cottage. This, in turn, strongly affects the supply chain and, in turn, food security and livelihoods across the Pacific. The answer to this century-old dilemma lies in science-backed solutions that are both innovative and practical. That is why we are pleased to witness the launching of the Cargo Pro Prototype Project here at the Center of Appropriate Technology and Development, or CATD, in Andave, Bau, Telebu. This project entails the fit-out and testing of a cargo pro boat that will enable remote and maritime villages to access affordable, regular, camera-friendly shipping services. The boat in fiberglass is fiberglass, so it won't rot or rust, and can carry up to 10 tons of cargo fully powered by the wind with solar electric backup. It can be operated by two people and is able to load and unload on the beach. A second aspect of the project involves mini cargo pros. They were first built in the Marshall Islands two years ago by Rob Denny and Harry Pro to provide a zero emission alternative to the outboard motor powered fiber boats which we solely rely, which we rely on. 
which, which solely rely on expensive fossil fuel to operate. Of course, Fiji and the Marshall Islands also co-chair the Pacific Blue Shipping Partnership that is now being re resurrected post-pandemic. This launch shows us the, li the limitless potential of public-private partnerships, not least when they are geared towards securing our Blue Pacific continent. We know that community engagement is crucial for the project to ensure ownership and long-term sustainability, as well as to support its scaling up through Fiji and beyond. Our current government infrastructure, such as the Ministry of Itaukia Affairs and the 14 provincial councils, will be consulted on how best they can support this very important next step. In addition, the CATD being a training institution there is an opportunity to scale this project via the training of students in the building of these climate-friendly boats. This would have an immensely po positive economic, social, and environmental impact at all levels of the community. We cannot only recognize how ocean wealth, health, equity, knowledge, and finance can be linked for transformative change. We have to show it. We have to create ocean-based jobs. We have to show that the ocean is our best ally for climate solutions. And we have to write the rules of sustainable development governance. The world has made some bold proclamations on the global stage. However, in the Pacific, we are doing more than just talking. We are working with forward-thinking partners like yourselves to begin a new chapter of climate action and sustainable ocean governance while improving the standard of living of our people. With that, ladies and gentlemen, you have witnessed the launch. And uh, on behalf of all of those who have organized this, we thank you for coming. We extend to you a big finakabakalebu. Thank you.